Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey everybody, this is Todd Henson. And I'm Tony Flamia. And we're gonna answer your questions. Not the ones you've asking right now, like why the hell am I watching this, but the ones you asked previously on other videos. Yes, we get a ton of questions, and you know we try to answer them uh, as best we can. We have certified techs on the channel working on answers, and it's just we get so many of them. Uh, so we took yeah. a they lot. They don't of answer it right, so I have to come on and answer it for them. Right. Um, so. We took a lot of them, highlighted the good ones, and now we're going to go ahead and play Stump, Stump the, the Chump. Todd. Oh, I was right there with you. It was the same thing. Stump the Chump. Let's do this. All right. Timothy Amos 8049 asked, Hi, Todd. Hi. If you have a 10-gallon tank, do you use 10 gallons of vinegar? If you're filling up from the hose, how do you know when the hot water tank is full? Also, do you turn your heater back on while it is setting. All right. I'm so new, thanks Thanks for the tip. So let's go over this. You know, on a 10 gallon tank, you do want to completely fill it up with vinegar, the right solution. Now here's what we want to do. You got all of this calcium buildup on the inside of the uh, tank and you want the water level to, or this water vinegar mixture to touch the entirety of the tank and that way you can get the most cleaning uh, opportunity you can with that vinegar solution. If you're buying white vinegar, which is roughly around 5%, yes, it would have to be 100% proof. So you'd have to buy multiple gallons of that. So um, standard cleaning vinegar will work just fine. You can get that at Walmart, typically in the bulk section, buy you probably nine gallons. Now, the reason why I say nine gallons is, is you can't fill up the top and you got what's called a flue tube inside. It's going to take up some space. Now, the question is, is, how do you know when you fill it up? Well, open up your P&T valve up at the top. And whenever vinegar starts coming out of the top of it, then you're completely full. And then the last question is, do you turn this on? No, don't turn it on. I know that that's what we were taught when it comes to, say, our coffee pots, our coffee makers. But that was the only way to get it through the system. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. Just let time be your friend. Um, so 100% is what you need, or roughly 9 gallons, if you buy the white vinegar. If you go to your local tractor supply store um, or a farming store, you can get the 30%. Now, if you get 30%, you need to dilute it. So get yourself one gallon, um, maybe two gallons, put that in there, and then fill up the rest with water until it starts coming out of the PNT valve. And let it sit overnight. Once it sits overnight, then you got to go into the cleaning process. Open it up, let it drain out. You're going to get this white, milky substance. Fill it back up with water, let it drain out. Do that several times until the water comes out completely clear. And that's how you clean your water tank. User KN5X1TT4U. I've seen a video of improving airflow through the back of the shroud by using expanded metal on the exhaust side of the shroud. Yeah. Is this a worthwhile endeavor? Will it improve the efficiency? Yes. There you have it. <laughs> um, yes, you can do that. Now, here's the thing. Um, I am cheap. Uh, yes, you can make that, get yourself some uh, metal flashing or something. Uh, I guess the problem with that is you're going to have to sit there and cut it and cut it and cut it until it fits. There's a company out there called RV Airflow that makes that specifically for your particular brand of um, uh, air conditioner uh, based on your RV. And um, man, it's already made for you. It's made out of a high density plastic. It doesn't mold or anything else. So if you want to make it, go for it. If you want to buy one. RV Airflow. Yeah, and they're, Not a sponsor of this they're show, specially by the way. molded. We went to their factory. It's actually yeah. a really nice product. So, yep. yeah, we're not a sponsor, but check it out. No. RV no, Lighthouse no. 288. What happens if you are a 50 amp trailer using a 30 amp reducer? I'm a trailer. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> uh, but have the in inverters, two, one for each leg, uh -huh. assisting what is coming in. Okay. Do you still have concerns you mentioned? Ah, now here's the thing. It all depends. There's a bunch of what ifs there. Um, who installed your inverters? 
And do they program it correctly? And what brands do you have? Now, here's the thing. Uh, we do solar installs here, and there's only there's very limited companies where you can program two inverters set for 240 volts, right? If you have a 50 amp service, you gotta be split phase. You know, leg one has to be completely out of phase of leg two. The question is, is what would happen when you dog bone down to a 30 amp or even a 15 amp service where you're only getting 120? If you have a Vitron system and it was programmed correctly and installed correctly, typically by, you know, a graduate of the NRVTA, then you have no concerns, okay? If you have another brand, first you gotta find out, one of the keywords you said is assist. Does it have a power assist function? You know, if it has a power assist function, you now need to tell that inverter what your current limit is. In other words, it doesn't know, whatever inverters you have, doesn't matter which brand, they don't know what you're plugging into. You have to tell it. In other words, is it a 50 amp service that you're plugged into or is it a 30 amp service? It's gonna try and draw through that um, AC input, whatever your demand is, unless you go in and program it and say, hey, look, chump, I'm on a 30 amp service. Don't pull any more than 30 amps. And what the inverter will do is it'll draw that 30 amps, but then make up the additional, you know, if you turn on multiple things from the batteries. So it, it's wonderful that they can do that. The problem is there's a learning curve too that there's, there's, there's few of us that know how to do that. Not saying that we're the only ones, but there's a few of us out there that know that. And so that question's a caveat, right? Depending on who installed it, what type of inverters you have. But if you have all that done right, no, that's freaking amazing. John Dernberger, 1951. Oh Thanks man! For the video, Todd. You're I, welcome. Yeah, I currently have an issue after troubleshooting for a constantly running water pump. I found that if I put the water pump system in bypass mode, the pump builds up pressure and then turns off. Thus, the issue is with the water heater. Have you ever seen this situation? No, but I think I can explain possibly what's going on. Okay, so you're saying that if you're using the water pump, as I recommend. Uh, the pump does not turn off in normal mode until you go over and turn your uh, wet base system into bypass, which means you're bypassing the water heater. One possible thought, well, there's, there's a couple. Um, if you don't have water spewing on the ground, if you have water spewing on the ground, you got a freaking hole somewhere. Um, another possible is uh, apparently there are some um, models out there that have a recirculating system. In other words, uh, set up with the, they're tied into the water heater and what it does is it recirculates the water until the water in the lines is hot. So that way when you take a shower, instantly you got hot water. It's a convenience thing out there. Some, some models have it, very few models have it, but that's probably what's going on. The water pump keeps pumping because the water heater has a recirculating device. So you may wanna find out if there's another way to turn that off. And therefore you can have your water pump at the ready standing at its standard 55 PSI pressure. Yeah, our, our our trailer had a um, little uh, on the in the shower. You could have the so you could have the water on and the recirculating. Nothing the will be off. coming out. It's okay. just it's just circulating. So that could be uh, that could. Yeah, be I'm not that frou frou, but yeah. yeah, just turn the recirc off. <laughs> no, no, you're not. You just you know like to have all three ACs on while you're boondocking. That's not foo foo at all. No, that's big. All right, Christine Santanelli, thirty eight twenty eight asks. Well, how old is she? Thirty eight or twenty eight? I'm not sure. Or was she born 38 or 28? I'm not sure. Okay. How would you suggest I run one AC off my 50 amp rig in my driveway? Turn here, only one on. Here we go. <laughs> I tried to reduce it down to my regular plug at my front door. Yes. But uh, it keeps tripping. Okay. I was only running one AC. Mm -hmm. Then I got a, uh, a splitter that would go to two regular plugs. And I believe she's talking about 15 amp Edison. Ooh, oh boy! And kept it kept tripping. Also, <laughs> I've seen it done on YouTube. What am I missing? All right, so you got to walk up to that plug, stare at it, point at it, and say, "Why are you tripping?" All right, here's the thing: your outside plugs. That was pretty good. I like that was it. was okay. All right. If we had a if we had a studio audience, um, ah, three of them. Like yeah. <laughs> your outside plugs are GFCI. GFCI protected. Now, the way a GFCI works, in short, is is it's reading the current going out the hot and the current coming back. And if there's any shortage in current, it'll instantly trip. Well, your air conditioner has a capacitor on there and the capacitor has to be loaded up. Well, that makes the GFCI plug think 
that there is a short, so it instantly trips. What you need to do is redirect where you're getting your plug in from. So maybe go into the garage area, deep into the garage, further than six foot away from the wall, it will be a different circuit. Um, that may be one area. The second area, the reason why it's tripping is it's freaking hot. Can you run an air conditioner off of a 15 amp service? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Here's the thing, your air conditioner is gonna draw more amperage in short, it's gonna draw more amperage the hotter it is outside because it has to work harder. And these may be, you know, all of our rooftop air conditioners have a amp rating. Let's say it's between 12 and 13. But that's at, you know, some small or some cool temperature. It's usually about 94 degrees surface temperature on that compressor. Um, if you're running it in the summer and it is nearly 100 degrees, chances are you're really close to that 15 amps, if not a little bit more, and you may be tripping it. So what I would recommend, if you want to try, take it to the garage, go into the garage, you're gonna find a different circuit that is not GFCI protected, and try that. The second thing I would, uh, would recommend is get an EMS, an energy management system of some sort, and look at the amp rating that you're pulling Okay, and if you're anywhere near, near 15 amps, just stop, don't, don't do it. Uh, another thing is, is whatever outlet you're plugged into in your house could also be plugged into or shared with other outlets. What else are you running on that circuit? So there's some stuff that you have to do to find out a little bit about your house, to find out if it's possible. Would a soft start help? Uh, it would help with the uh, inrush, but not necessarily, you know, the, the instant uh, kickoff, right? Because you still got to fire off that compressor. All right. Well, I think that's enough for today. We'll, this is part one. We'll go into part two. and uh, We can say that or we can go, and there's your tech tips. There's your tech tips. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're out there in the video, Roll the bloopers. This is Todd Henson and over at the National RV Training Academy. <laughs> and I'm just here. <laughs> so do you think... Hey, everybody. Gonna, this is Todd Henson. It's this Tech Tip totally Tuesday. So who wants to start it? I want to start with some appetizers. <laughs> so, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I, <laughs> right? Just keep pumping the water until there's no more water, and your water pump will turn off. No, it won't. It'll keep turning off. <laughs> That's not it. No. I'm, I'm hey, whatever you do, don't do this. It's a Q&A. Question and answer. Ah, yes. Here's the question. So we no, I, I asked a question. You answered it. See, there's our Q&A. Done. <laughs>